ध्याता मंत्र धरैर्वृता सृजतिया बुद्धि प्रकृतिया शिवा आरंभ स्थिर चिंतन मता सिद्धि प्रवाहो यता दृश्ये भ्रम्यति देश काल विवृते विश्वस्थितिर्वायया सा शक्तिर्निखिलाकोटि सवितुर्व्याख्या नस्तपद आधानाद्वित प्रभाव विसरो विश्व यो मूर्ति कालम यगद्विसृष्टिकरण कार्यापम विदु मे हेतुर च भेद निलयो देशो यदालंबना तस्म ध्वस्तघनो घनाय महसा ताताय तोभ्यम नम सत्या सत्य विवेचक स भगवान्मो विधान ध्रुव कल्याणाथक हरेर्जनिमता अंतर्मानोद्यमी प्राण त्राणपरायण स्थितिमता रुद्रोपि कामा धर्मार्थे क्षण कारण से जगत शास्त्रस्तवैतेम शव रूपम ते वियदुत्तम कृतिमती शक्ति परातापसी जातमजाडक युवोन्नता दीपक शांति भूतकुणा नम विहा क्षमा सार्वात्म्यं भजतस्तवेश महिमा सीमा न मुल्लते श्लिष्य गहनांबर रहसी ते शक्ति शरीर विभो प्रेम प्रश्वसी तेन वाम वितनुते सर्वत्र गूढ़ श्रिय सांद्रानंदता यथावपुशिवा घर्मा भसा मलिका वैरींचंड परंपरायत ताराकृतिर्नृत्यती अखंड प्रज्ञान जगदुदय भंग स्थिति गुण गुणातीता शक्ति स्तव सहचरी विश्वजननी अनशेषात्मा च जगद भार भरी तो न दूते शुरसि महान सोसि भगवन् अविश्लेष्य तत्सुचिम भज नाथ जगता अजानर्धम ते भुवन जननी प्राणदयिता तथाप्यस्द मे चरितमराधम न गणयस अहो आमोन्य प्रथन पटु दाम्पत्य महिमा
तस्मादेनम तव पदजुषम त्वत्कटाक्षोपजीव्यम नाथ श्रीमंकुशलकरणम साधु संधाय जिया साते सक्ता मयितव जने बिभ्रति कार्य भारम दृष्टेर जिया भुवन जयिनी सर्व साम्राज्य लक्ष्मी
very happy birthday to everyone, those present physically as well as those who are present psychologically and spiritually across the world. On this special occasion, we are celebrating Pandiji's 105th birthday. It's a time for remembering and renewing some of the profound experiences, realizations, teachings, and the living example that he so lovingly shared and transmitted to all of us. Even for those who may not have had occasion to have met him in this lifetime in the physical body, when reading or viewing his video or just coming in the presence, one feels that same love, that same soft, gentle, soothing influence I had perhaps shared uh, an experience that was had by one of the devotees in Chennai going through some critical difficulties in health while in the hospital. One night he had the experience of somebody who came with specs, entered his body shining a torch of green light and going through his entire body, healing him. And the next morning, he was cured. Later, when he saw Pandiji's photograph, he recognized him. Oh, that's the person. I shared this as an example of the work that is still going on from the subtler worlds by those who have dedicated themselves to the awakening of humanity and the upliftment of our consciousness and the acceleration of human evolution towards the supramental consciousness. Pandiji is one of those part of the mother's army, we may say, because we are in the middle of a veritable battle between the forces of evolution and the forces that seek to delay or even reverse. The victory of the light is inevitable, it is certain. The question only is of what happens in between. And so much of that, the mother said, depends on us. To the extent that we choose to open ourselves to the light and make that little effort necessary to connect with her presence, with the divine, to center ourselves in our deepest aspiration and to link all the activities of life to that aspiration and thereby to the divine help. All the transitional passage can become so much more direct, so much more smooth and rapid. But there is a critical dif difference between the integral yoga of Sri Aurobindo and all of the surviving traditions to this day, in that Sri Aurobindo's yoga demands a powerful manifestation in the world of the highest divine consciousness. It is not a yoga merely of withdrawal into a higher state, 
living in some beatitude while allowing the circumstances of life to wallow in their present condition. It is a yoga in which whatever highest consciousness we are able to reach, eventually the highest, must be brought down all the way into the most material aspect of our own consciousness. Our body itself must become conscious of the supermind and become its living vehicle, conscious instrument and material embodiment. And to whatever little steps we may take in that direction, something of the higher light should manifest not only in the body and through the body, but in our material circumstances. Each one of us has to become a little lamp radiating or reflecting the light that pours from above into the material world and changing the circumstances even of nature's processes. And therefore that makes the nature of the journey itself an enormous challenge. Difficult, Sri Aurobindo says, perhaps the most difficult yoga considering the goals it seeks to realize. And yet, because of the nature of the practice, the way we rely upon the working of the Divine Shakti, it becomes the easiest yoga for the effort that we make in relation to the results we gain. And therefore it is to this that we have to cling. The entry into the material world, the grip in the material consciousness, the changing of the material circumstances, the ability to manifest in life down to the very detail is demanding. It requires that tremendous patience that is only belonging to Mahasaraswati, the entering into details to make perfect. And it was this that Pandiji showed to us in the way he lived. And I may take a moment to share some personal experiences. Most of you would have your own experiences too, but these would resonate. One of the things which is most striking, which I have, in a sense, admired all through life, was Pandiji's ability to be always ahead of time. If you observe the way most of us tend to live, we look at the watch, oh, I'm late. And I have to as if catch up by hastening to come close to the moment that the time represents. Or you have work that should have been done yesterday that we are catching up only today and perhaps barely completing given a certain deadline. This tendency to be always slightly behind the flow of time and wanting or needing to always catch up and stay in a state of stress or effort is so common in humanity. With Pandiji, it was the opposite, literally the opposite. He would come and sit down, you look at the watch, ah, he is ready half an hour before an appointment. Half an hour, not five minutes, not ten minutes, half an hour before. And if you did not see his life closely, you might say, ah, yes, perhaps he has the time, he has the convenience to be ready in advance. No, the amazing thing was that he did so much work during a certain period, he had up to three or four secretaries running to keep up with him. And what we saw was, if they did not finish the work assigned within 24 hours, sometimes if he was more patient, another day or two to allow them to become conscious that they were late, he would take their, the work given to them and do it himself. So if you saw the quantum of work that he did, was always more than these people who were assisting him. And yet you never felt that he was stressed or strained or in any way in a hurry. There was deep poise of calm, a relaxed, joyous contentment, a smoothness of the flow of working, 
no struggle, no s dramatic strained effort seen. The work came, it was done and it went on one after another with an efficiency and an efficacy which is more valuable than efficiency. Having results intended, that's the efficacy. That was so effortless. And then he was ready half an hour before. And we're saying, what's this? And we have to keep up with it. The other interesting aspect of this ability to be ahead of time, and this I must elaborate on, is just as we are behind time, he's ahead of time, literally leading time. And so one of the very interesting things which we find or we sensed in the way he worked was being ahead of time, he could actually guide the flow of events, guide the flow of circumstances. When we are behind, we are dragged by the time, compelled in spite of ourselves. And because we are behind, we have to catch up with the changed circumstances. The scope of navigation, because we are late, is very, very little, if any. Being ahead of time, he was as if leading the flow of time. One is reminded of the divine horse of the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad, where this flow of time and circumstance is described as a horse, and he has the front of the the air breathing through the nostrils, the fire through the eyes, and so on. Sri Aurobindo elaborates on the whole sense of this symbol. It's as if the divine energy flows, unfolding events, forming circumstances, leading, guiding, and behind is the trailing of the past which fades away. And we generally tend to be dragged along by this flow. Being at the front, being ahead of the flow, literally one had the sense that he was navigating this flow, leading it, guiding it. Sometimes in ways that even would be considered miraculous. But it was not a miracle, it was the normal state of being. And the becoming just flowed, the circumstances flowed effortlessly. So one of the interesting effects of that was, we found ourselves dragged, not by the time being behind it, but by his energy being ahead of time. And so in a sense, without making a particular effort on our part, we found him ourselves as if carried by him or by his energy, and as if always on the edge, slightly ahead of time, and then when we disconnected or lost that link, then as if slipping back behind time. And again, relinking, being brought in front. Literally, you were held and carried forward and brought to this poise of being ahead of time. And so in a sense, we had the good fortune of having experienced both, being ahead and behind, but because of the lift that he gave. Such was obviously the nature of the mother's own way of being ahead of time and dragging everyone with her. The difference being everyone here included all of humanity. Or at least the part of humanity that chooses consciously to align to her. And to the extent and in the parts in which we are able to thus open to her consciousness, we find ourselves similarly lifted drawn ahead, carried by her. Being in the physical presence, there is a great advantage because you are as if carried physically. And this was the experience we had with Pandiji. His family, his spiritual family was also very large because he was after all a king or rather an emperor. And all of us who were drawn to him all of us who, were, who are part of his family receive that same support, that help in, a, in the same vividly, intensely personal, loving softness. It did not lack intensity. The intensity was also there as necessary, where needed. We had a friend, he was a businessman in Delhi, for whatever reason, Pandiji gave him the necessary 
place he would call almost every day for some reason and perhaps for him it was his way of starting the day and opening to the influence of the light and sometimes he would share some very personal trivial issues and he said i have boils on my back and pandit ji said this is not acceptable it has to go and second day again he says the boils are still there and the third day and finally on the third day pandit ji said this is enough this has to stop with force and that's it the next day it was gone <laughs> and so the force was used when necessary and occasionally inadvertently it was a friend of ours you may recall ramaswami who was printing some of the books in those days from chennai who called up pandit ji and said we are coming this morning it was a sunday morning we are coming this morning and he had already pandit ji had already organized certain things and he said with some force as he put down the phone but i don't want them to come today uh, he said yeah but i won't don't want them to come this morning as he put down the phone we heard this and then by about 10:30 in the morning there was a phone call the car had a breakdown we will only arrive in the afternoon and pandit ji was very distraught he said i have to be i have to be more careful he was conscious that that moment's force was enough to intervene in this way so we had some very interesting experiences of this kind as i said it was as if leading the flow of time leading the flow of circumstances it's an example it's an example for all of us because at this point especially in the present evolutionary phase the need of humanity is for this spiritual consciousness to materialize to take charge of the physical circumstances the old ascetic ideal of abandoning of the world is no more acceptable even a partial acceptance of life as a temporary passage is not enough we have to treat life as the very domain in which the divine consciousness has to manifest take charge reconquer the world reconquer matter and divinize it naturally our domain of influence is much smaller for most of us it will be just our little life and our little bodies and that's the starting point for some it may be a little larger and influence ranging wider whatever it is but we have to begin with ourselves and it requires two things first in our own physical consciousness the divine mother's influence has to permeate as much as possible as deeply as possible as completely as possible it means making the body conscious and opening that physical consciousness to the light and the force and the mother's love and second through us through our actions in the circumstances that we are given as the space of influence that same light and force must lead it means a great transparency within us we heard yesterday this very moving and inspiring lecture of pandit ji on the work as sadhana and we have put this online for those who would like to see it with very detailed guidelines the scope of what is to be done in the work itself and obviously this cannot be done unless our own consciousness has been sufficiently purified and opened and for this we start with the part within us which is already most open which is already open and all of us have it otherwise we would not be here because there is a part in us which is open conscious and already linked to the divine mother we feel drawn to her we feel that this spiritual life is worthwhile is even essential so we start with that which we already have it is not a difficult thing to do first become conscious of this center which is already within the lamp that is already present and lit and then in this feel her presence and as you feel in her 
you feel her presence, you immerse in her to the point where you lose yourself. Your lamp grows, brightens, widens, intensifies. And you may put the intention that this center of light within should spread to fill the rest of you. Your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, the little inspirations, even the little desires and the little parts which oppose or question or doubt that this light, this influence may spread into all these. And the, perhaps the easiest way to spread and to overcome the resistance of other parts is through the most powerful force in the world which can melt all resistance, which is the mother's love. And as her love fills this center within you, as it overflows your heart's cup and spreads into the rest of the vessel that is your body, your, your mind and your life energies, your vehicle, your adhara. As it overflows, it melts all these layers of resistance or darkness and brings her light and force. When Panditji came to the ashram as a young man, he would have been perhaps in the same condition as all of us are, even today. And it is through this opening in love to the mother and the pouring of her love into him that the transformation and the full forging of his extraordinary personality as a center of light and as, a, as an engine for the mother's force and love was built by her. And we have to take that again as our example and our inspiration. And with him we experienced this, the love that poured from him. I have spent, I will say, hours just sitting there next to him. Sometimes he would be reading and then feeling, soaking in the flow of that love and light and deep peace. And occasionally he would he would be engrossed in the reading and occasionally he would suddenly sense the presence and put down and give this beaming, soft, melting smile and your heart would melt, your whole being would melt and you gave yourself to that love. Today is such a day we can, when we can experience this in the same way, the same way physically. His presence is as materially felt. And so I would invite everyone whether you are present physically or otherwise, to let your heart open in love to the Divine Mother's presence, to the Divine Mother's love, to the love that Pandiji poured as an instrument of her love, and let yourself melt and soak in, dissolve all sense of separateness, let her carry you, that you may grow in time to become as powerful an engine of the mother's light and force and love. We will concentrate on this for a while, but before that, a quick announcement. At 9.30 this morning, we will go to the meditation hall in the ashram. As you know, Sri Aurobindo's room has not yet opened, but we will go to the room which is just below Sri Aurobindo's room and allow his presence to flow down and fill us. So I would suggest that you be there by about, those who want to join, to be there by about 9.25. And at 9.30 we will go there for a, perhaps 10 minutes of meditation. And in the evening, as usual, we have the 7 p.m. meditation for half an hour. But any time during the day, you are welcome to come here, sit and soak in the presence. Before you leave, do take the prasad which will be kept here as well as the message card which we are distributing on this occasion every year. And for now, holding this theme, holding this aspiration, opening ourselves in love, let us all join in this immersion and we will begin this with a collective chant, sharing our aspiration, joining our hearts in aspiration, in a collective chant of Om together three times before we sit in concentration.
I will invite all of you to partake of the prasad and take the message card.